Let's start this session with a simple def uh, a formula even, so simple that I named it incorrectly. So I want to introduce you to the notion of minute ventilation. Don't panic, it's nice and simple. I'm gonna take you through, okay? So we're gonna say that this thing, coming back to it in a second, minute ventilation, it equals something. And we're gonna say that it's equal to tidal volume, more of which in a second, Tidal, let's just get our equation in first, tidal volume, and we're going to multiply that tidal volume by what we're going to refer to as respiratory rate. Okay, respiratory rate. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, sounding out my words phonetically. Sometimes when you have to talk and write at the same time, you have to be confident that you're writing the right thing down. Now, this is where we're going to pause. What is this minute ventilation? What is this tidal volume? Respiratory rate is a bit simple. Let's, in fact, let's start there. Respiratory rate is how many breaths you take per minute, how often you breathe in a 60-second period. Now, I'm going to introduce you to the idea that maybe at rest you take about 12 breaths. Now, it depends where you go with sort of averages here. The average is actually, if I just put it up here, the average is between 12 and 16-ish. Okay, but I'm going to use the vigor 12 here. And again, this is breaths per minute. How many times I... Per minute. Okay, I just did two of them there. Now, tidal volume is also a pretty simple concept. We measure it in milliliters and it averages out at about 500 milliliters per breath. And it is the air that we breathe in and out per breath. Okay, the air that we breathe in and out per breath. So just think about this a second. We've got the number of breaths per minute. We've got the amount of air per breath what therefore must minute ventilation be? And it's the amount of air per minute. And as a result of that, we can quickly calculate that it's around about six liters of air um, at rest, and we know it's per minute, so let's make sure we put our values correct, six liters per minute. This is how much air we breathe in and out of our lungs per minute, not oxygen. We're not consuming six liters, we're taking six liters in per minute pushing six liters out per minute, okay? So that is approximately those values. Now, in order to emphasize this to you, we're gonna introduce our ruler, and we're gonna do a little bit of plotting, okay? Not in the graphical sense, not in the cackling kind of, let's find a sneaky way of doing something sense. So I'm gonna put in my X axis, I'm gonna make it nice and long there, and let's put in my Y axis, which I wanna to get to exactly 90 degrees, Put my Y axis in there. Bear with me a second, guys. There's my Y axis. Okay, great. Let's get rid of this. Now, always with gr good graphical skills, we must label our axes with units. So on the X, we're going to have time in seconds. Wonderful. And on the Y, we're going to have quantity, quantity of air. Notice that this is not minute ventilation. It's quantity of air. And we're going to measure this in litres. Okay, so quantity of air. Now, what we're going to find, of course, is that, that human beings breathe in and they breathe out. You know this, you've done it all your life. We can represent this graphically. Can we, we can do that through a model called spirometry. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of spirometry. Oh, my, my battery is a bit low. That's not good. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of spirometry here, but the key thing I want to stress to you is that spirometry involves a mouthpiece or a mask. The person is breathing in and out of that mouthpiece, and that air, which is going into and out of the lungs, it's being measured by being pushed into what's called a bell jar. The bell jar is moving up and down, and it's creating a curve. So let's do it like this. What colors did I have, actually? So for my tidal volume, I had pink. So let me use pink. So when I breathe in, the quantity goes up, and as I breathe out, the quantity goes down. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. You get the idea. Okay, so we could say categorically that this value here is two things. First thing it is, is that's my tidal volume. Okay, wonderful. There's my tidal volume. The second thing I could say is we know it's around about 500 mil. So if we were to go from here to about here, on if we had units here, we would expect that to be about 500 mil, okay? Now, that's all well and good, wonderful, but this is the point I wanna to make to you, is that we don't just breathe all the time. We can breathe like, and out like, and we do that during exercise, right? So let's take this particular peak here, and I'm gonna imagine that rather than stopping there, that this peak goes up, and it comes down, and here, it comes down, and it comes up. Now, would you agree with me that in essence there, what we've got is that this value 
is now is now larger. This is a larger value, okay? And it's effectively that my maxim, maximal inspiration, and it's at that point, and now I'm now gonna force it all out to get down to here, okay? That maximal outbreath, this is what we refer to as our vital capacity. Now I'll define it for you in a second, but before I do a couple of things, notice that it is not coming down to zero liters of air in the lungs. There is a, a volume of air left over. I'm not gonna go into details, but that's an important thing to stress. Secondly, this vital capacity is significantly bigger than our resting tidal volume. And this is the point I wanna to make to you, is that vital capacity, Let's put it in, let's just put it in here as vital capacity. I've written that really badly. Vital capacity here. What is it? It's a maximum, it is a maximum amount of air, a maximum amount of air exhaled, exhaled after a maximal inspiration. After a maximal inspiration. And that should make sense from the curve and the spirometer trace that we've got here. Look, we've got a maximal inspiration here. I then force it out. It's here. That value, whatever that happens to be, is our vital capacity. Last things from me on this today, okay? Remember that if we were to start to exercise, two things would happen, okay? Two things would happen. Number one, the first thing that would happen is we would breathe we would breathe deeper and believe me that happens before faster go notice it next time if you want to now what that in effect means is that tidal volume goes up but also of course what we're saying here is that what happens second is our breathing or we breathe faster in other words our respiratory rate i'm just going to put rr goes up and because of that if we go back to our our start point here, our very start point, if we go back to our original, if this goes up respiratory rate and this goes up, by definition, the amount of air per minute goes up significantly during exercise. And that's the point I want you to take away. Cheers.